Hi, welcome to the witching season. Today I'm going to talk about all things autumn, all things October, and we're going to talk about ghosts and all sorts of wonderful, ooh, spooky things. So stick around, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And if you like this video, please give it a like, a thumbs up, because it helps ratings. And we'll get started here in a moment. So my usual spiel, um, if you don't know who I am, I am Yasmin Gallinorn. I'm a New York Times, USA Today, and Publishers Weekly best-selling author of ooh, spooky books, urban fantasy, paranormal romance, all things in the supernatural. And uh, I've got 24 years in the business. 20 of it I spent mostly with New York publishers, and the last four I have gone indie, and I am loving it. So I come to you from both sides of the fence, and I usually talk about writing, and I talk about planning, and organizers, and tarot, and magic, and all sorts of things on my YouTube channel. So stick around if you'd like, and uh, make yourself welcome. So for those of you watching this on YouTube, it's not quite October, but this is going on my blog for October 1st. Every year, <clears throat> I do a post on my blog called Welcome to the Witching Season. And it's the Herald in October and the spookiest, most fun month of the year um, for a lot of us. I love the autumn. I love autumn rain. I love the mists that rise along the ground. I love the scent of the cedars and fir when the rain drips off of their needles. It's this cool, crisp, almost pungent smell, and it makes the forest feel alive. Now here in the Seattle area, we don't get quite as much rain as most people think we do, but we get a steady drizzle most for nine months of the year, pretty much. Um, and it started early this year. Our rains usually come in around the ends of end of September, but they started early in September this year, so we are into autumn here. Um, in fact, I'm recording this on the equinox, so we're technically into autumn as well. And uh, here, autumn heralds rain and it heralds the mists and it heralds clouds rolling in off the off the ocean. Uh, we live a hop, hop and a skip away from the Pacific Ocean and Seattle in fact is on what's called Puget Sound. Now Puget Sound is a long inlet of water that comes down in from the Pacific and it touches uh, a number of communities on both the peninsula which is over west of Puget Sound and over there you find the Olympic National Forest and that is the oldest growth. We are the, I think we are the only temperate rainforest in the lower continental um, United States and the trees grow hundreds of feet high and it rains over there, it rains I think 400 inches a year. And there are a lot of ooh, spooky places over there. In fact, Port Gamble is considered one of the most haunted places in Washington State. Um, a lot of Sasquatch sightings over there. And yes, I do believe he is out there. Um, I'm not sure what he is, but I think he's, at, he's there. Enough people have seen him, including friends of mine. Uh, the entire peninsula over there is a haunted area, and that's why I place a lot of books there. That's where my Whisper Hollow series takes place, and I put it there for a reason, because the entire area is just filled with this mystical energy, and it's edgy, and it's not all that friendly at times. I love going over there, but there's always this sense of being watched you know, of things watching from the forest. So yes, it's it's a beautiful place over there. 
um, over here in the Seattle and east side area. I live on the east side, which is east of Lake... It's on the east side of Lake Washington, which divides Seattle proper from the east side. And it's uh, basically part of the greater Seattle metropolitan area. Um, it's pretty much built up all the way around the lake here. And we have to build up. We can't really build out because there isn't a lot of room to build out. We are sandwiched between the Cascade Mountains and Puget Sound. And uh, we're on a mega fault line here. Um, we're overdue for a major earthquake, uh, probably in the eight to nine point range. And it could come tomorrow, it could come in a hundred years or more, but it will come at some point. Uh, we have volcanoes here. <clears throat> Another thing that I love, Mount Rainier is the guardian of this area. She's a sentinel. She watches over Seattle and all the communities around, but she is not asleep. She is definitely um, poised to go at some time, just like St. Helens did. Now, St. Helens is quite a ways to the south from where I live, but when I, I was here when she blew, and the ash falling from the sky was amazing, and they shut the elevators off in the dorm where I lived, and I was in a walking cast at that point. I had fractured my ankle, um, probably not wearing my glasses, of all things, because I stepped off of something and thought I was on the ground when I wasn't put on my weight on that foot. Well, yeah, I ended up in a cast. But I had to go up and down six flights of stairs in that cast because they had to stop the elevators because the ash would have gotten in and mucked up the machinery. And it turned dark. I mean, it was black. And I remember that night when St. Helens blew, there was a point when I woke up in my dorm room and I couldn't hear out of one ear, and I couldn't hear for three days. I'm pretty sure it was the change in pressure when she blew that did that. But so, so yeah, we have volcanoes, and we have earthquakes, and we have the rain, and we have the mist, and we have giant forests, and we have the ocean. This is one of the most beautiful areas I can think of ever living. Um, I haven't lived over here on the east side of the mountains all my life, west side of the mountains all my life. I grew up in eastern Washington where it's dry and deserty and I really don't like that area. Um, it's just not a place where I'm comfortable. But over here, the scenery, the landscape becomes a character in itself. That's why I use so much description in my books because the land around us here is alive and it's vibrant and you can feel the heartbeat if you listen. Um, you can feel the heartbeat of the forests when you're in them. And we have a lot of forests left here and hopefully we'll be able to preserve them. So yes, the witching season for me is a combination of the mist coming off the ocean and it's a combination of the forests and it's a combination of the rain that's stripping off the boughs. And it's a combination of seeing Mount Rainier rising up clouded in, you know, shrouded in clouds. Um, this time of year is also one of, my, one of my nemesises, which are spiders. And you may wonder why I write so much about spiders, and I don't know. They just make it into my book somehow. Maybe it's because I'm so afraid of them because I'm arachnophobic. But they also fascinate me and you know and outside that's fine they can stay outside i'm not going to bother them as long as they're not building a web across my sidewalk but we have these big fat orb weavers and they're striped and they're they seem to fit right into the autumn and they always come out in late august and start building their webs and they stick around through the through the uh, autumn season. And uh, inside, of course, we have giant European house spiders, which I, I kid you not, the lake span gets like that wide. 
I mean, we're talking four to five inch wide leg span. And they're big, brown, and ugly, and they are the second fastest spider in the world, so they run like crazy. And they're, hey, if you live here, you're going to find them in your house for the most part. But there's one upside to them, even though they scare the hell out of me. If they're in your house, it means that you probably don't have the hobo spider, which is, um, it does have a venomous bite, because the European house spiders eat the hobo spiders. So I just keep trying to tell myself that while I'm having someone else take care of them, because I have a hard time getting close to them. I can get close to the orb weavers outside. They stay in their webs. They don't jump at me. Once in a while, one will come dangling down from, like, the corner of the house or something. But they, for the most part, you know, stay put in their webs. And I'm fascinated by watching them. Um, yeah, I, I am terrified of them, but, but I recognize the energy behind them. Um, so we have spiders and... When I was in college, <clears throat> I was just, when I first came over here, um, I was in my junior year of college and I was barely 18. And I would walk between what were called the mods, which was where I lived, which were modular housing, basically, um, across the campus, which was Evergreen's a thousand acre campus and it's beautiful. But I'd walk across the campus at night up to the uh, rec building, the recreation building, or up to the library. And it would be pouring rain and the mist would be rolling across the campus. And there would be puddles under some of the street lights that lit the way. And I remember looking at the rain just falling on the puddles. And I was so unused to rain because we just didn't have a lot of it over in eastern Washington. And I loved it that I would sit there and I'd watch it. And I, I could imagine that there were creatures that lived in those puddles, that cre uh, creatures that came out and that were shaped like water. Well, of course, I was thinking of water elementals, you know. I didn't know it then, but I was thinking of that. And I could almost imagine I'd see them. And, you know, I was really into Lord of the Rings at that time. I still am, but that was when I first discovered Lord of the Rings, was that first season here over in, East, or in Western Washington. And so I would walk through the mist and I would think, maybe there are trolls, you know, up around the bend. Maybe there's a troll behind that boulder there or behind that tree and it was just a magical time and it cemented my love for this area um, I came over here and the first week I wasn't sure I liked it and after that first week I knew I could never leave the coast I could never go back um, the energy here is just so different and when you get out on the water out near the ocean it's different the sound isn't quite the same as the ocean, but it has a similar feel because it comes in from the Pacific. And uh, yeah, it's an incredible area. So I urge you to come visit someday to this area and take a look around because there are so many things to do here. You can go whale, whale watching. Um, you can take ferry rides. You can go to Pike Place Market and watch the guys throw the fish. Yeah, I'm being a bit of a commercial here, but, you know, hello, Kaylee, I see you. Um, but it truly is an area that I'm absolutely in love with, and that's one reason why I set all my series here. You know, it's like, for me, there's so many things about this area that I love that it makes sense for me to write about it. Come here, pumpkin. Come here. Kaylee says hi to all you guys. Yes, she does. She's a good girl. She brings me toys. She goes hunting and brings me toys when I need a toy. And she is the best toy picker outer ever. So, um, 
I'm going to talk about ghost stories later on this month on my on my blog, um, not necessarily here on YouTube. But I wanted to tell you one one small ghost story today. A few years back, Sam and I went on an anniversary trip over to Port Townsend. Now that's out on the peninsula, um, the Olympic Peninsula, and as I said, it's a very haunted area over there. Anyway, so we were over on the peninsula and we uh, checked into this hotel. Now, I have to say, I'm not going to say the name of the hotel. <laughs> However, the decor there was the most gaudiest, think thrift store, sailor shop decor. It was hideous. It was the cheesiest, kitschiest stuff, you know, the mermaid lanterns and the big headboards that looked like they had shells all over them, but it was actually plastic or resin, I think. But we checked into the hotel. And as we walked in to where we were, uh, where our room was, the building where our room was, there was a, a um, stairwell off to the right. And as I walked past the stairwell, my first thought was, Sam needs to be careful or he could fall down the steps. Now, it was very odd because they were set off. They weren't near the hall. I mean, you would have to go out of your way to go over to the to the edge of the stairs. But for some reason, I kept thinking he could fall down the steps. He could fall down the steps. So we we stayed there. You know, we went out and spent a lot of time on the beach the next couple of days. Um, just wandered around town. Really got a feel for what it's like over there. I was doing more research for a book at that point. And then I kept feeling every time we came in near those stairs, I'd get this mild anxiety. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what it was. Or I wasn't sure what it was at that point. It was just a slightly anxious feeling. Hold on a second. Anyway, so... The last morning that we were there, we were packing up, and I was taking the suitcases out to the car. And I started, I was walking past the stairwell, and I happened to glance to the side, and there I saw this woman. She was translucent. She was tall as me, if not a bit taller. And she was standing near the bottom of the stairs, and she was crying. And I looked at her. And she looked at me for a moment, and then it was like she suddenly realized that I could see her, and she vanished. She just disappeared. And I was like, oh, there's a woman here. There's a ghost here. That was where my anxiety was coming from. I was feeling her anxiety, I think, because she seemed very anxious and very unhappy. And so it was, it was odd. I mean, I'll never know who it was, I don't think. But... She was dressed in Victorian clothing, and there were a lot of people who lived there in the Victorian era. I mean, the the Olympic Peninsula is rife with Victorian houses, and um, for a while, they thought Port Townsend was going to be a port city, but Seattle kind of took over, and Port Townsend got left in the dust, and it almost became a ghost town for a while, and then... In the 70s, a group of artists and writers and stuff went over there and started moving in. And they created, it's basically kind of a restored town, but it's newly restored, so to speak. Um, it's not, it wasn't kept up, it was brought back to life. So, yeah, there... But there are a lot of places over there that are very odd. There is a um, an abandoned military battery, and it's called the Kinsey Battery. And it was used um, at Fort Wharton when that was a lookout during the war. Well, I decided to go 
poke around in there because the public can go down and walk in there and look around and it it is a creepy creepy ass looking place um and uh in fact i'll post a picture of it um right here So yeah, it's it's a creepy looking place from the outside, but I got in there and I was walking around and all of a sudden I could feel something there. I mean, there were a few other people there, not too many, but there were a few other people and I suddenly felt this entity there and I was like, crap, there's something here and it's not friendly and it can influence people to do things they might not normally do and i suddenly realized i was inside in the dark um and i was alone and there were guys around you know who i didn't know and there were places you could drag people to and man i was just like oh hell no get the hell out of here. <laughs> so I turned around and I hightailed it out of there. But you will find that I used that setting in Flight from Death, actually. Um, the book Flight from Death. But it will probably make an appearance somewhere else too because there are just, the energy there was really freaking strange and I don't know whether it was from being abandoned so many years because when you abandon a building it takes on a life of its own or I don't know if it was because of anything that happened during the war you know it's like I'm not sure but whatever the case it was a really interesting place to see and I wouldn't mind going again but I think this time I would take somebody with me so yeah there's a couple couple interesting tales from over on the peninsula um and speaking of peninsula i am so looking back forward to getting back to writing whisper hollow um i am so excited about taking up that series again and making it the way I truly want it to be. Now the first two books, as I said, I'm tightening up because I don't feel they were tight enough and I feel that they were a little bit, um, they were influenced by the interaction I was having with my ex-publisher at the time. But uh, I'm not going to change the plots a whole lot. I'm just going to really tighten them up and maybe shift around a few things. But I am so looking forward to writing in that world again because that area is a magical area and it is truly an ooh spooky area and it's beautiful. The Olympic forest is incredible. There are trees so big you could drive a car through the trunks. I mean in terms of it's so wide. Um, and the moss just drips off the trees and when you have fallen trees in the forests over here the moss grows across the the logs and then mushrooms and whatnot grow on on the moss and those are called nurse logs by the way so if you see that term in my books that's what it means is a tree that has fallen in the forest and basically they become like a nursery for moss and mushrooms and all sorts of different fungi and stuff like that anyway so i think that's going to be it you know it's like yeah welcome to the witching season and why don't you tell me um what your favorite favorite thing about this time of year is and if you live in an area where autumn doesn't mean mist and cold weather how do you celebrate autumn? What does it mean for you where you live? Um, so, yeah, I think that'll do it today. And next time I will answer some reader questions. And uh, maybe Kaylee will help me again. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.